the songs for the prophets. There's something else going on in songwriting because it's something to do with creativity, right? Yeah. So if, if, if you're using this stuff to, to not only to try and tell a vivid story, but in fact to tell a story in which your own kind of emotional responses and creative powers are in the middle and you're seeing it from inside, it's not like you're imagining it's real. There is a kind of a, 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 an, an identification that's going on with with the heart of the subject, with with the feelings of, of of the subject, that is above and beyond writing vivid history. All right, it's 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 not about bringing us there so we can see it. It's about putting us there so we are it and looking from the inside out. When I see the gap or or the blurring, you know, when a couple of books are uh, all saying about I event mean, or what did happen here um, that's where I, I sort of start to think oh well maybe that's my job then <laughs> you know maybe maybe that's my job to glue it together mm. I particularly mm. found in the more um, the more <laughs> salacious books about the, the witch trials um, mm -hmm. I, I found that people almost like almost like didn't really want to really think about, uh, didn't really want to talk too much about why was this happening. Where are, <clears throat> where are we? We are on Cobbett's Hill, which is uh, no, but half a mile, I guess, from St. George's Hill. We can't get into or near St. George's Hill because of um, the really quite astonishing security around the gated community which I thought we could kind of sneak through but you really can't sneak through they've got um, number plate recognition and lots of men in high-vis vests and gates and stuff so we snuck onto Cobbett Hill kind of feeling guilty that we were doing something wrong um, but uh, nonetheless we but saw nonetheless. what did we what did we see as we came over the road from there? we saw the memorial to Jared Winstanley so it's almost like they they want to kind of acknowledge that that um, heritage of, of the digger community, uh, but they're going to put it in a corner, in the margin, uh, and, and and sort of distract you, keep you away from the from the, the private estate. Um, but it's beautiful here, and we recorded here, um, and we listened we listened to the sound of digging, but it, it wasn't the, the digging of a of a utopian community trying to establish itself. Uh, it was it was the sound of pile drivers or jackhammers probably building some great new mansion for some some rock star we have a fire the spirit burns we have a new law right in every human heart purging humankind and overturning the dominion of the imaginary lords the imaginary lords within the bottomless pit what is it but corrupt heart and corrupt flesh heaven Hell, angels all are within And the beast that rises out of this pit Is wisdom and power in the church Contrary to love in everything Adam is wisdom and power, he's flesh Uh, picture of the book is Blake's picture. Oh, Lucifer before he fell, I think. We're in Falmouth on a beautiful July evening, um, sitting on the harbour wall, uh, the biggest natural harbour in Europe. We're about 10 miles south of Truro, 
Uh, and it was in Truro that Anna Trapnell uh, was arrested and accused of being a whore and a witch and the usual accusations that were laid at the door of women who did uh, played unusual roles in public. Yep. She came down to Cornwall to prophesy in the company of a group of men known as the Fifth Monarchists, who were a religious political movement from the 1650s, who were opposed to uh, Oliver Cromwell and who wished to establish the rule of the saints on earth. When Anna Trapnell prophesied, she fell into a trance, which meant the things that she said had to be written down by, by a scribe. And this was in spite of the fact that she could, in fact, read and write. So one of her pamphlets is, 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 is written uh, by herself. And that's an account of her experiences in Cornwall. Um, but she fell into a trance either because, I mean, you could argue that God caused her to fall into a trance, and that was what actually happened, or because she was aware of the tradition that when women prophesied, uh, they had to be unconscious in order to prove that it was God speaking through them and that they were merely a channel for the voice of God and that nothing was coming from their own uh, minds. You fell through the air Writhing and spinning I thought I saw the spirit entering You were in a trance And so they would believe us Your words floated down like angels to embrace us When you prophesy writhing from first to last Saw your eyes open and I loved you all the more And they did believe you And some of them followed your words which were my words My your first love I was your only love I was the man who held the pen You were the one whose words cut through the world And I was the man who held the pen And there's a crack Prophecies opened up You fell in pieces on the floor And you spewed the future And you said Death shall be no more And you said I saw four horns They were the four powers The first were the bishops Now down and broken in two Second joint of a head now down and smashed to pieces. The third of many scales, and each scale was a man, and each man was pretending to love. The fourth of many colors, swollen words, fine promises, all tempting the people of God to sin. songs. John Portage. John Portage who brought the most inspired souls in the land to his kitchen in the rectory in Bradfield and then used alchemical magic to summon angels. He was chased out of his parish for scandalous behaviour and the angels appeared no more. Where are we, Joe? 
We're in Bradfield in Berkshire. Um, so that there is the old rectory. Uh, it was built, we think, around the sites of uh, an even older rectory that, w that was burned down. And it was in the old rectory that um, John Pordage, uh, who was a minister in this parish in the 1640s and early 1650s, uh, summoned angels by using alchemical ritual magic. And all of the, the most interesting radicals of the, of, the, of the 17th century connected to Portage in some way. Thomas Tawney, Abbey Asa Cop, Elizabeth Poole, Anna Trapnell, they all, they all have connections. Uh, Gerard Wynne Stanley, all have connections. Uh, and many of them came and ate porridge in his kitchen. Porridge with Portage? Porridge with Portage, yeah. Um, so this stuff happened here. You know, stuff happened here in 1649. This was, you know, if... <laughs> If, um, if, if there are ley lines under this country, they converge here. Yeah. Now you okay. see nothing at all In the stain on the kitchen wall That window to enlightenment is closed that love you will not find Touch weighs more than doctrine Memories of touch cast thick shadows Statesmen and priests, they come to steal your peace And you say that you don't mind And it's not about Redemption It's not about Salvation It's the distance Between you and Heartquake The distance between You and the sky Your past lies all before you Your future far behind Cause the angels all went away And you say that you don't mind And it's not about Justification It's not about Purification It's the distance Between you and Heartquake The distance between You and the sky To explain it I sort of shied away as well In a way and kind of Staying on the maybe. kitchen wall we can definitely spend a song, at least a song, pretending it's real because it's, yeah, it's gonna be, it could be a really great song. Yeah, and you can explain it away. You can, you can use kind of you know empiricism and rationalism to explain it away. And you know, I, I don't believe in angels and I don't believe in God. So on some level, I don't think this is kind of true in, in or, or real in any way. But at the same time, if you're going to write history, you kind of need to be able to imagine how the people that you're writing about saw things yeah. and thought things and so at some point you need to ditch the rationalism and the atheism and the empiricism and put yourself in that position and I try really, and imagine what it felt like I really enjoy it you know like the the, 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 the the effort and the hard work it takes me to think rationally day to day <laughs> exhausts me <laughs> and so I think I think it's kind of interesting you talking about that fact that you you don't believe in angels and I don't either. I, I and 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 I, I did some, towards the end of the month, I did think, actually, how does this come over? Like, how does this come over? What is it that someone would think that I think about God, the devil, witches, and stuff? Because mm -hmm. I spend such a lot of time singing in character about these things. But yeah, I just wonder. 
Mm, mm. How did <sighs> what does your atheism in itself make this subject more attractive to you? Like 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 what what would a believer yeah. write in six songs about these prophets <laughs> um, um, make of it? Yeah, well, I mean, it, it makes it more interesting partly just because it makes it more difficult, I think. To, yeah. And so you have to think of, of, of ways, of, of narrative ways, or, or maybe musical ways, um, of, of, of getting around the obstacles. So, it, it, so it, there's, there's a song about Portage, The, the Angel's Left, um, which is kind of written from his son's point of view. So it's, it's somebody who's very close to him, but doesn't quite see things the way that he, that his father lives. sees them. So it's all, it refracts it. When we made these songs, we travelled to places connected with the prophets and sang them there, in the fields. Songs made flesh with the sounds of real places, the wind, the seagulls, the pile drivers, Darren splashing in the river Pang. We followed Trapnell to Cornwall, Portage to Bradfield, Wynne Stanley to St George's Hill. is coming. 